Alright guys, how's it going? I am finally getting around to doing my high-end gaming PC build. This is gonna cost two grand, two thousand dollars, around fifteen hundred pounds, and two thousand dollars is about the maximum anybody should really be looking to spend on a new PC. So don't be that guy that spends five grand on a PC that probably performs worse <laughs> than this one will, or at least no better. So let's get started. Right, first up is the case, the NZXT H440 mid tower case. I really like this case. You've probably noticed that I actually do really like the NZXT cases. Again, this is just purely, you know, in the eye of the beholder. If you don't like it, you're just going to have to find a case that you like. The only real issue with cases is, does the graphics card fit? Does the cooler fit? Most high-end cases like this, yeah, it's going to fit no problem, regardless of what you get. But that's what to look out for. If you don't like this one, you can also get it in white. I've got it in black as well. I would, however, avoid paying over the odds for the Razer edition. Right, so $110 NZXT H440 mid tower case in America. And in the UK, I've decided to go with the white one. I really like the white one, actually. It's a good price. Again, it just looks absolutely awesome. And it's a very highly rated case for the money. Right, moving on to the power supply. Right now in the US market, the XFX Pro 1050 watt black edition looks like the power supply to get simply because right now it's at a very good price. I was going to go with the Cooler Master V850, which is my choice in the UK because of the price basically, yeah? Very nice price at $119.90. Either one of these power supplies is going to be more than good enough for this PC, yeah? I simply went with the XFX in America because the Cooler Master is around about the same price. They're both made by Seasonic, they are incredibly good power supplies. I would go as far as saying that the Cooler Master is probably the go-to 850 watt power supply on the market right now. It will easily take two graphics cards, however this build will only have one. Both power supplies have got all the connectors you would ever need. Right, moving on to the CPU. For me, there is only one high-end CPU worth buying, and right now, it is probably very worth buying, because yesterday while I was looking at this, it cost $420. The price is now down to $370, which is a saving of $50 overnight. It is, of course, the Intel Core i7-5820K. Six cores at 3.3 gigahertz. Now, this is where a lot of high-end buyers make a mistake. There's simply no reason to go higher than the i7-5820K. <laughs> Not unless you really need the extra two cores of the $1000 5960X. Let's just have a quick comparison of them. Right, this is Intel's ARC website, which holds all of their processors and all the information on all of the processors. So here we have the 5820K. The performance part is what you're really interested in. You can see it's got six cores, 12 threads, a base frequency of 3.3 gigahertz and a maximum turbo of 3.6 gigahertz. This is your $400 12 thread CPU from Intel. They've been doing this for a good few years now. Next up is the i7-5930K. Now some people will try to stretch to this thinking that they're going to get a lot more performance but the reality of it is you're not. You can see here you've got the same number of cores, same number of threads. Yes, you've got 0.2 GHz more of a base frequency, 3.3 on the 5820K versus 3.5 on the 5930K. And you've got a slightly higher turbo as well. However, simply put, once you overclock them, they're both going to go to the exact same level. They are the same chip. The only difference is the 5820K has got one or two little bits fused off. It's not enough to make the difference in price. This is a big difference here, the maximum number of PCI Express lanes of 28. This is something that Intel has deliberately cut back on in order to segment the CPUs. You can see here that on the 5930K, the maximum number of PCI Express lanes is 40. Do you know how much difference it makes? None whatsoever. Unless you want to be benchmarking quadruple graphics cards, this number of PCI lanes simply does not matter. And the maximum number of graphics cards that you should have in your system as a gamer is two. So this stuff, it really just does not matter. The 5960X is really all about cores. You actually get eight cores and 16 threads. However, as you can see, the base and the turbo frequency is lower. So in some cases, this will actually perform worse than the other two. In gaming loads, yeah? At $1,000, you're really just throwing your money away. The brand new price of $370 in the USA and £300 in the UK, considering the prices of the Skylake CPUs, the i7-6000 series, to me, this is the best CPU on the market right now.
The biggest drawback with the 6 and 8 core Intel CPUs is the platform really does cost a bit more. Motherboards, $225 compared to maybe $70 for the Skylake CPUs. In this case, I've chosen the MSI X99A SLI Plus. It's a very good motherboard and it's won awards all over the place. You're getting absolutely everything you can imagine that you'd ever need <laughs> in a motherboard. Again, by all means, pay $500 for one, but really, again, you're just throwing money at something that you probably don't need if you do that. In the UK, the price is £175. Now, you're going to need some DDR4 RAM. The 6 and 8 core X99 platform allows for quad channel RAM. It's a bit like marketing gone mad in all honesty, however you may as well make use of it. We're going to go with 16 gigabytes. You know that I would normally only go with 8 gigabytes. However, if you're spending this amount of money on a PC, you may as well just go with the 16 gigabytes. You've actually got 8 DIMM slots on the motherboard, yeah? So, <laughs> even when you're buying 4 here for quad channel, you've still got 4 left if you do decide that you want 32 gigabyte. That was my thinking behind this. And also very important for me in this build, it is a low profile design, which is something you really want to look out for when you're buying RAM and fitting a large aftermarket cooler. That's something you should look out for in other guys' videos, by the way. If they notice these sort of things, they know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm so modest, aren't I? $115 for 16GB of DDR4. Again, it's fully compatible with the motherboard. And that comes to £90 in the UK. Right, we're going with an NVIDIA card, the EVGA GTX 980 Ti SC Plus. I had a look at just about every 980 Ti out there. And there are faster cards than this, and there are quieter cards than this, and there are cheaper cards than this. But this right now for me is the sweet spot 980 Ti. I want to talk a little bit about this because if you actually ask people right now, should I buy a new graphics card or should I buy a high-end PC, most of them on the forums will tell you, no, you shouldn't, you should wait. If you're buying Nvidia, chances are you've got another year to wait until there's a better graphics card than this from Nvidia, maybe even longer than that. From my point of view, you could be looking at at least nine months and probably a year plus until the 980 Ti is beaten by Nvidia. If they do manage to beat it with a mid-range card, it won't be by that much. The 980 Ti is not suddenly going to become a bad card overnight. This is why the price costs so much in these PCs. You cannot get away from the fact that if you're putting a $660 graphics card into a PC, it's going to end up costing a lot. That's £530 in the UK. Right, it's slightly different from usual. Normally I've been going with the Samsung 850 EVO. And that's exactly what I'm doing again here. However, this time I'm going with the M.2, which is basically an SSD that connects directly to the motherboard. It's a pretty decent price. You're getting better performance than the regular 850 EVO while only paying another $20. It's well worth doing that. If your motherboard has the M.2, then it's well worth going for this. The reason I went for the 500 gigabyte is because it is a high-end build. It's £128 in the UK. Now, I've decided to go with a 2TB desktop hard drive. A lot of these high-end $2,000 builds were going with a Samsung Pro M.2 SSD, yeah? And another Samsung Evo for the secondary hard drive. However, I'm not really buying into that yet. Hard drives are still pretty cheap. $71 for 2 terabytes of hard drive space. You're just going to let it sit there and you can stick whatever you want onto it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm using more than 500 gigabyte of hard drive space for all my games and stuff. So for me, yeah, by all means, if you're pretty sure you won't need it, go with a 1 terabyte. That's £57 in the UK. And last but certainly not least is the Noctua NHD 15. I actually have the Noctua NHD 14 CPU cooler. It's a really nice cooler. It's maybe not awesome looking. The beige and brown doesn't really do it for a lot of people, me included. And it is a really big cooler. And you get everything you would ever need with it. It's pretty competitively priced. $90 for a CPU cooler is a lot of money. But if you ask anybody, they'll pretty much say this is the one to get for air cooling a CPU. £69 in the UK. It's not that difficult to fit either. So at today's prices, my high-end $2,000 PC actually came in at $1,979. Mostly thanks to the reduction in price of the 5820K. <laughs> in the UK, I'm a little bit over my £1,500. £1,563. You simply do not need any more PC than this. This is as good as you're going to get. There may be guys out there that get 1% better performance and paid $1,000 more for it. It's not worth it. This is the smart buy for the high-end PC. 
If you're tempted to go with SLI or Crossfire, check out my SLI and Crossfire video, as that should help you make up your mind on that one. For me though, the single fastest graphics card is the way to go, and that's why I went with the 980 Ti in this case. Right, gonna wrap this one up. As always, there are links to each and every component in the description. Feel free to ask me any questions about absolutely anything in the video, or if you're wondering if a part's compatible, or absolutely anything. Just fire away your questions in the comments. I'll catch you later, guys.